three challengers, two contestants, one winner, who will be crowned the title of God. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am your host, Barry Brookshire. And now I shall introduce you to our two contestants of the night. First, we have Celeste Mayflower. Good evening, Celeste. Thank you for having me. So uh, tell us a bit about yourself. Oh, um, well, when my parents gave me my first planet, I mean, I was so excited. This has been my dream for as long as I can remember. Um, but unfortunately, when we went away on holiday for just a couple thousand years, um, it, some aliens invaded and uh, meteorites hit. Um, but I've been able to reflect on the whole experience and I think I've got some strong ideas coming into this competition. Oh, well, I hope everything goes better for you tonight. And now we shall be introduced to our second contestant of the night, Chad McQueen. Good evening, Chad. Good evening, Barry. I'm excited to be here and ready to win. Oh, fantastic. So tell us, what brought you here tonight? Well, it's quite the story, Barry. See, my interest in planet building began, what, five million years back? When it was just me living with my cosmic kitten, Fluffy. Now, sure, Fluffy was a beaut, but she also had a death wish. And as the old adage goes, you play with stars, eventually are sucked into the gravity well and forced to die a horrible, fiery death. <laughs> oh, I can remember her, Barry, sailing through the arc of the corona. I was thinking, Fluffy, if only I could have built a planet where you would be safe. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that very moving story with us, Chad. And now we shall move on to meeting our two judges of the night. We have Andy with a Y and Andy with an I. <laughs> our judges rank as some of the top gods in history. Combined, have created over a thousand planets, winning numerous awards and holding the title for the largest solar system listed in the Guinness Book of Universe Records. So judges, any... Oh, encouragement you can give our contestants tonight? They better be careful. Any mistake they make here could be their last. I'm sure you guys will be great. Just remember to take a deep breath before you start, relax and have fun. And with that, we shall start the competition. Each contestant will be given three hours to complete the construction of their planets. You will also receive a vial of life. But remember, contestants, use this wisely, as it will be the only vial you receive during the competition. All right, and now it is time to begin. Safety glasses on, folks. All right, and we will begin in three, two, one, go. All right, Celeste, so run us through what you've got planned for us tonight. Um, well, I'm just starting with the basics, getting some fundamental species going, uh, really just trying to work on uh, the balance and creating cohesive ecosystems. Oh, well, it seems like you know what you're doing, uh, so good luck. Thank you. Now, Chad, what is your plan of action for the night? Interfere? Know what happened in here. I'm just letting my life take its natural course, you know? Go with the flow. Well, it so sounds like you've got some very brave choices. Uh, I hope everything goes well for you tonight. And now it's time to move on to the first challenge of the night, judges. Your, Your planet, planet is about to be hit by a meteorite. Comet. Meteorite. Space rock. <laughs> Most of your life has been completely destroyed. What will you do? Celeste, what's your game plan? Well, uh, to be honest with you, I'm pretty devastated about all the life that didn't make it through. Um, but a, a, a good number of fundamental species have survived, so I'm going to be working with those and using some of my extra life and just getting some diversity going. Great plan. Hope everything goes well. Good news? Yeah, I found some uh, life I must have dropped earlier. Well, do you have any plan of how to use it? Well, given that Plan A, the dinosaurs, is a bit of a flop, I've had to look elsewhere for inspiration. And what do people like better than me? <laughs> for my next project, I'm going to create a new species of life modelled after yours truly. I'll call them apes. A for awesome, P for powerful, E for extra awesome. <laughs> That's an interesting plan, Chad. Best of luck with it. Congratulations, contestants. You have overcome the damage of the meteorite. And now it is time to move on to the second challenge of the night, judges. 
A plague has taken over your planet. Spread by fleas that are spread by rats, it spreads like wildfire. Think fast. Time is running out. Our contestants will have to act very quickly to overcome the damage of this new disease. So, any plans, Chad? Well, first of all, I'm just a bit annoyed given that my apes have evolved into humans, which are A, uglier, and B, much better at dying. That being said, I have found this plague doctor who seems to know the solution to our little uh, sit here. Yeah, mercury and arsenic. If anything's going to solve this problem, it'll be those two. Yes, uh, well, good luck with that one. Well, Celeste, you overcame that disease very quickly. Uh, so run us through how you did it. Uh, well, to be honest with you, Barry, the... Humans had some interesting ideas for treatment to begin with, uh, but I've been working on developing their intellect, introducing hygiene, the scientific method, and I think that's progressed the society well. Well, personally, I think you've done an excellent job, but we'll have to see at the end of the competition if the judges agree. And with that, we shall move on to the third and final challenge of the night. Judges, watch out. The temperature of your planet is rising. Ice caps are melting. The weather is unpredictable. Extreme droughts and heat waves are killing. Basically, the world is on fire. Good, Good luck. luck. Well, Celeste, this is unlike anything you've experienced in this competition so far. What will you do? Uh, well, it's clear to see the causes of the situation, and I think that if I take immediate action, I can overcome this. So I've started by immediately switching to renewable energies with the solar and wind, and right now I'm just working on getting other sustainable practices going with agriculture and waste management. Well, sounds like an effective strategy. Good luck. And chat? Well, I've figured out that the only people that have any real power for change on this planet are the rich ones. So, I've had them build dozens of coal power plants all across the planet, which will then be enough to power my latest and greatest invention, this big fan. I can blow it over all the ma major population centres and keep everybody nice and cool. <laughs> and you think this plan is a winner? Oh yeah, you bet. Well, we'll have to see at the end if the judges agree with you. All right, contestants, you have five seconds left to put the finishing touches on your planets. Five, four, three, two, one, and step away from your planets. And it is time for our judges to give the final verdict and decide who is the winner of tonight's competition. And the winner is... Chad! Chad. Celeste! Are you kidding? Did you not, not see his planet? It was a smoke work of cloud a <coughs> I can't breathe. I've seen I think it it's deflating. It's, it's it's deflating. Okay, okay, uh, let's just, um, all right. Um, looks like we'll have to go to the audience for the final decision. All right, audience, I want you to think very hard about this decision and I want you to think about who you think is the most deserving for tonight's winner. And if you were on this planet, how would you feel with the construction? All right, I want everyone in the room to close their eyes. Thank you. Everyone close your eyes. Thank you, no peeking, all right. Now, if you would vote for Chad as the winner of tonight's competition, raise your hand. All right, hands down. And now, if you would vote for Celeste as the winner of tonight's competition, raise your hand. Keep your hands where they are and open your eyes. These votes are meaningless. Look at what is currently happening to our planet. The loudest voices are drowning out the voices of the majority. With no significant action being taken, our world is going downhill, fast. There is no planet B. There is no place like our home. No challenge, no challenge poses a greater threat to future generations than climate change. I've heard some folks try to dodge the evidence, saying that they're not scientists, that we don't have enough information to act. Well, I'm not a scientist either, but do you know what? The best scientists in the world are all telling us that our activities are changing the climate. And if we don't act forcefully, we will continue to see massive disruptions that can lead to greater conflict, hunger and migration across the globe. There are some unnerving parallels between the show and our own lives. We can't stop bickering for long enough to take action against the global emergency. There are petty squabbles that are occurring and instead we are focusing on them instead of the crisis that affects everyone. We know what the right thing to do is, so why isn't anything happening? The solution is right under our noses. Is it really that hard to start the process? 
climate change is running faster than we are. Ambition and compromise are both needed. Never have the stakes been higher. Every week brings a new example of climate-related devastation. No country or community is immune. And as is always the case, the poor and vulnerable are the first to suffer and the worst hit. It is clear that climate change threatens decades of development progress and places in jeopardy all of our plans for inclusive and sustainable development. Climate change is a gradual change. And while it may sometimes be difficult to discern the differences from one day to the next, it is still happening. And so we need a solution that will last. It is clear that we are the engineers of the future, but and better yet, based on your votes, it would seem that many of you know what you want that future to look like. But our vision and our reality are still running on diverging courses. As human beings, we have an obligation to leave the world in a better place compared to how it was when we entered it, to craft a superior life for ourselves and for our children. We need to step up and acknowledge our place as our own gods. But the question still stands. What, what world will you create?